La -da 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 -da. Hello, Toolbox. To a Thursday edition of the Computer America Show. Uh, David Perry is our guest for both hours. He's now in our live uh, video chat, the streaming chat, if you're watching. And um, he's trying to figure out how to do his lower third. <laughs> so we'll be starting in less than a minute. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. We'll get started as we talk about malware, uh, F-Secure, and uh, maybe movies, too. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Thursday night. We'll have a lot of fun. Stand by. Twenty seconds. That's good, David. You like that? Yeah, it's backward. Right. Well, trick, click the little reverse arrow by the off. Your shoe will go live in five seconds. Four. Little reverse arrow. Two. There we go. One. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest-running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello, and welcome into the Computer America show. It's the nation's longest-running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast to coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I am your co-host, Ben. Yes, and uh, welcome into a uh, Thursday edition of the Computer America show. And uh, uh, we got a great show planned for you tonight. Uh, in both hours, we're going to have David Michael Perry uh, with F-Secure and King of the Delta Blues. Uh, he's going to be joining us here uh, in the, on our show. And uh, let's get this out of the way right now. Um, if you have a question or a comment or a suggestion, uh, uh, anything you want to talk about, <laughs> you can do so by calling us at 347-884-8881. That's 347-884-8881. That'll get you on and get you through. We also have email set up when we're live and on the air. It's live at ComputerAmerica.com. Uh, you can also join us in our live interactive uh, chat room. Just go to our homepage at ComputerAmerica.com. Right there in the center of the page or under the first pull-down menu, it'll say, it says live chat and video or chat and live video. Either one, just click that button. It'll take you to our chat room page uh, where you'll see on the left-hand side uh, the live IRC chat room. Type in a nickname. That's the name you'd be known by when you go in there. Um, then beneath that is a, a place for a CAPTCHA code. That's either a number or a couple of words. That just ver verifies that you're a live human being. Uh, so put in what there what you see. Uh, if you can't see it, you can hit, click the reload button so you'll get something that you can see. Then click the connect button and you'll be moved right into the Computer America chat room. Also beneath that is another button for the IRC clients. If you do click that button, it'll take you to our free software page. And right at the bottom, uh, you'll see some of the plugins that we uh, use. <laughs> and uh, um, basically, it just formats the chat room into a more visually pleasing user interface. It puts it in its own window, formats it. Uh, it's up to you. That's totally optional. But uh, if you do the chat room a lot, you probably want to install one of those plugins for the browser or the platform that you're using. And then sharing that same page, of course, is our live streaming video page. Uh, where you can watch myself, you can watch uh, Ben, and you can watch our guest. And tonight, David Perry is live on the video page, so you can see him as well. And if we want to show images or something, we do that on the on the live uh, video streaming page as well. It's all available, and it's all how you can interact. Uh, one more thing is our show notes uh, page. If you click the show notes button, it'll take you to our show notes page, uh, where you'll see today's show, November the 13th, and uh, you'll see a link uh, there to F-Secure which is the company David works for, and uh, in the description. So uh, anything we're talking about there tonight, you can also see that as well. So given all of that, let me introduce uh, my guest. Uh, David Perry has been in the computer game for over 30 years. That's right, 3-0. Doing everything from tech support to being the educational spokesperson for companies like Trend and On Labs and Semantic and Cybermedia and so many more. Uh, these efforts have made him one of the country's leading anti-malware experts, uh, David is now the threat strategist and spokesperson for F-Secure. He's also an official Computer America correspondent. They are the few, the proud, yes, and the very different. Uh, David, welcome into Computer America. How the heck are you? 
I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show, Craig. You know, I was just sitting here thinking, I wonder what I could do but sit in front of a webcam all night tonight. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. I know, David. <coughs> really looks forward to being here because I call him up and I say, hey, you all ready? He says, am I on tonight? A lot of things happen in my life, Craig. So. <laughs> so, I do the same thing, though, so... Yeah, but, but you're, you're on the show all the time. Every night. <laughs> I know, and I keep calling you, uh, and, I, I'm, and I keep thinking, that was the last time I'm doing this. <laughs> what are you majoring in, Ben? Yeah, Computer science. Excellent. Yeah. Keep it up. It might be the last time. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, I'm all glad that we're here, and uh, we've got lots to talk about, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, malware and the latest malware, what the you know what threats are out there, who's being attacked, uh, what companies are, are are being attacked, and how they're getting through. I mean, there's so there's so much of this in the uh, news in the news today. Um, but also, you know, it's Thursday, and David, uh, we kind of wander, meander. We might talk about movies and or magic or who knows what yeah. we might talk about. So, uh, so a bunch of stuff. Have you seen Have you seen um, Interstellar? Yes, I saw Interstellar this past weekend. I Did thought, you like it? I I liked it, but I really had. I mean, um, how should I say? The technicalities behind it were very good. I mean, the uh, uh, they had a, a consultants uh, who really, you know, sh did some did their you know did their homework by talking about how things how black holes may or may not appear. What I found a little bit of a stretch was, you know, I, I don't want to give anything away, but but basically. How it comes back to him, and 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 to me. I sat next to a physicist who was making fun of the movie all the way through it. Really? Because there was a phys. Uh, they had a, a, a couple of physicists uh, on on the staff talking about how it really works. I'm sure they got paid very well, but you know when you're talking to people in Hollywood, it's like, and then there's two sons, and the people from Hollywood says, "Oh, who plays the two sons?" <laughs> <laughs> that was in a movie called The Player. I've got the mystery refocus itself uh, camera, so if I move in it'll and move back, it'll go all fuzzy for a minute and then get back into focus. So I'm going to keep doing that just to confuse your vi viewers. I think you're going into a black hole. Have, have you been watching Constantine? Yes, I have. I, I enjoyed the movie, and I've been and I my wife and I have been watching the series, and it's it's different than the movie premise. It's better. It's more like the comic book. Yeah, but but uh, yes, it is. But uh, I like the movie actually better so far. But I, I am we are watching it, and it is very entertaining. But wait a minute. So what did the physicist say about the Interstellar? He kept making fun of it. If you would have approached even a rotating black hole, no matter how you do it, you will be pulled apart into individual quanta before you would ever cross the event horizon. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. You know, too. But, so um, it, it it sounds like like just you saying that, David, sounds like an episode of The Big Bang Theory, where you know they all go you see the guy I went with. Hi, Russ. And really enjoyed <laughs> going to the movies with you. I love I, this is my friend Russ. I met him in Smart Kids School. I went to Smart Kids School. Yeah. And Russ is too smart by half of how smart he has to be, and he 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 is way up on all the latest things in physics and stuff. And he, he, he was he couldn't sit still and keep quiet and suspend the disbelief. He had to make fun of the movie while he, while people were watching it. Well, that's nothing different for us. <laughs> okay. You've got to realize you're going to go to a movie with Russ. You've got to take. You've got to. It's got to treat him as part of the movie experience. Mm -hmm. I like Constantine better than the movie. I like Gotham a lot. Have you seen Gotham? Yes, I'm watching Gotham. I really enjoy it. You know, it's oh, like the guy playing the Penguin is the star, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, pre Batman days. You know, it is. It's yeah. very. It's very entertaining and. Uh, not, and and uh, actually, all the geek TV Blacklist is really good this year. Uh, I don't know. Do you watch Blacklist? No, but I watch. I watch Forever. And person of interest. Person of, of course, person of interest. Yes, you know, I, I think I liked for I liked Forever better when they called it New Amsterdam five years ago. Well, uh, I watched The Flash. Flash is great. Fla yeah. And Arrow is great. Those are great shows. I, I, lots I of great stuff. There. I kind of phased off of Arrow. I I, I kind of got tired well, of it. Well, it got better. You should go back. All right, because uh, but um, I do watch The Flash, and um, let's see what else I watch. Um, uh, the number oh, oh, Resurrection. You know that's good too. I got off of Resurrection and missed so much of it that I'm going to have to wait and binge watch it when it all shows up on Netflix. Well, no, the, the, now how you plan to watch television these days? You can watch Resurrection on the CBS uh, website and 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 watch. I've got 12 TV shows I'm covering and a day job. Oh, okay. Well, there it is. <laughs> Uh, and of course, you use your DVR now. Sitting behind me, mm -hmm. on this side, 
And I'll lean over so you can see it. Yeah. See that? That's a television. Uh huh. And it's got a VCR built into it. Oh yeah. And it's an analog cathode ray screen television. It's an and old. I keep it. I have tapes that I need to watch occasionally, yeah. and that's a, a viewing device, right? And sitting below it is a DVR. Yeah. And I can translate stuff into digital using the DVR and the and the VCR. And I love the lamp that's above it because it looks like the lamp is sticking out of your head. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's shining on the Earth, which is uh, rising above the moon, right. on a photo that was taken on Apollo 11. Uh -huh. uh, I'm exactly. eating peanuts while I'm talking to you. So. Ben, ben doesn't remember Apollo 11. Ben uh, doesn't remember cathode ray tubes. No, he doesn't either. Uh, CRT TVs? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I do. Okay, he remembers those. Now, what is that on the moon? It looks like there's an elephant or something. There's a brass elephant tacked to the moon, and then there's a pennant from Apollo 11. Okay, all right. Bookshelf full of virus reference volumes. The magic bookshelves are right here and here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, here I'll take the camera and show you. There's a toy frog holding a banjo. Okay. <laughs> Autographed photo to me from Robert Moog. Okay. And and uh, a, a penguin antenna. And there's a picture of me and Peter Norton. Oh. And uh, just a lot of stuff. I have, I have a lot of memorabilia and stuff in my room in my office there. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, um, we're going to talk I about. Show like me around your room. Here, let me click on you so I see you. I feel What's like every room you're should, in should consist of more toys than actual work. Yeah. Well, I do. I have a lot of toys in my office. Look but in I, your office. I can't Craig? show you because it's the camera is in my screen. You okay. Know? Well, then I'm going to go back to showing you more of my office. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so over here, these are all magic books, right? And there's a brass sun there, and you can see there's one of those Kit Kat clocks with the eyes that go back and forth. I remember those, yeah. Mm -hmm. Autographed photo of the Fire Sign Theater. You remember them, but Ben, yeah. you don't. And uh, there's a bunch of Comedia masks, and there's a there is a Guy Fox mask, that, but I'm not really part of of uh, me for Vendetta. Anonymous. Yeah, anonymous. Yeah, yeah, I'm not anonymous. I'm and there's a fan, and each of the blades of the fan has a little rocket on it. Uh. And the light, the dome light in the middle of the fan is the Earth. So that's uh, that's my office in a nutshell. What was that large thing with numbers, with a round object? What was that on the wall? That's a clock. Oh, it's a clock. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's, there's luminescent. There's a luminescent stars stuck all over, and there's a black light shining in that corner. You can see the stars are glowing above that. And there's a marionette of death that I got in Prague, where they make marionettes. In they're, so Prague. Cheerful. they're so cheerful over there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Prague is a great place. If you ever get a chance, you should visit it. You couldn't wouldn't catch me dead there, but yes, okay. Really? Uh, yeah. No, I'm not into. Uh, no. Uh, okay. okay. Have you ever been overseas? Uh, yes, one time when I was in college, and I regretted every minute of it. But other than that, yes. Okay. Uh, no. Well, not Whoa, I've seen a couple of horror movies. I think Craig actually lived through then. Could be. Uh, however, uh, so let's talk about F. Let's talk a little bit about what's what's going on. Let me tell you about the latest threats. Are Late all about Macintoshes. Uh, okay, now, now they're all about iOS. What is it you're eating first? You have the, the peanuts. Nuts, peanuts. I am eating. I am eating. Uh, flaming hot chili powder peanuts. I recommend them if you want to have something that's flaming hot and relatively low calorie. Okay, flaming hot. I'll remember that. Flaming hot chili powder peanuts. They're dry roasted peanuts covered with chili powder. You buy them at the gas station actually as you're driving through town. So, so anyway. anyhow, tell us about what about the latest. I mean, okay, I mean, there's, there are two vulnerabilities in iOS that let you infect a non-jailbroken iPhone for the first time. Wow. Okay. The first one is called Wire, and Wire, you have to infect the PC that it syncs to, either the Mac or the PC that it syncs to, and Mike, uh, Apple was able to patch OS X, OS X, so it won't work with Macintoshes anymore. Now it'll just work for people who sync their iPhones to a PC. Really? But there are no there are no viruses in this vulnerability. It is just a discovered vulnerability. The second one is a vulnerability that involves the um, the uh, ability for enterprise application uh, updates to be made to enterprise based applications. So that if your company is running an app in all of them, it uses that as the gateway into your phone. And that one, ha it was discovered by FireEye, and there's no patch for it at all yet. So there, there are two pat, there are two vulnerabilities that are open 
for iOS devices, but there's no viruses in them yet. So there, nobody's used them yet. There are two exploits that nobody has taken. No, no, no. When they, when they, when they, you do it, that's when you call it an exploit. You just call it a vulnerability when it's just a potential. So when they take advantage of it, then it becomes an exploit. Yeah. So yeah. there's no. You yeah. can't be affected by it yet that we know of, but who knows? Tonight might be the night, so you could get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, it, every time this is brought up, you know, Craig always says, "Why are they, Why are they giving us so much attention? Why, why, why? You know, now you're letting everyone know. It, it, it's a, uh, you know." These people that find these vulnerabilities, I mean, is it like their their main job to first say, hey, everyone, check out what we just found? Actually, they went to Apple six months ago and told them about it. Really? Yeah, that's there are rules of that. See, when these were both found by corporations. These weren't found by individual hackers. And the, so you find a corporation finds it. You are behooved to, you know, go talk to Apple about it. Say, Apple, here we found this, and we're going to wait six months before we announce it. But when the six months go by, you announce it, whether Apple's ready or not. Uh huh. That's called the the. Those are the rules of full disclosure. Who made those rules? I don't know. You know, it'd be interesting. Not everybody follows them. There are people who go out and brag as soon as they find something. Lots of people. Yeah, but those aren't the corporations usually. Yeah, no, usually those are the individual white hat hackers will do that. They're, and they're, there's a lot of people. There was a guy who was finding vulnerabilities in antivirus software just a couple of months ago. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. Like that. The guy who found all kinds of vulnerabilities in antivirus software, and he was saying, oh, antivirus stuff is, is programmed by dogs sitting at computers, and look how backwards they are. They should quit using C and start writing their programs in Lua. And we said, Lua? You know, because Lua is Lua is an interpreted language. You can't write antivirus software in Lua. Antivirus software is a big machine with a lot of moving parts that has to do things rapidly. And that's why they're all written in C. And parts of them are written in code so that they will work out rapidly. But this guy was it was funny because he said he was really mad because he thought that that we should all pay him for discovering these things and then saying rude things about us. And the answer is like, no, go away. Thanks for telling us. We patched them all. That's all patched now. Thanks. You know, if you if you beat up on anything long enough, you will find vulnerabilities in it. They are endemic to the process of code that is written. Wouldn't you agree, Ben? I I mean, it's uh people design these things and from one thing I I've learned about coding is, you know, you, you got the coders who they write something and then they say, "Man, what is wrong with my code? Everything's breaking. And then you got the other section of code to say, man, this code, how is it working? It's awful. It, it's, you know, it, it's hard to find every, you know, every vulnerability, hard to find every, like if something works, you know, if, if you fix something, 10 more things break. It's just how code is. So I could definitely see, you know, uh, if you pick because it apart, it long enough, you're going to find something. six months to fix the operating code system because, you have to really do all kinds of regression testing. It has to work with everything. The operating system is always there, and it's always on. I, so, learn, I learn in computer science classes that there's no such thing as, a, as perfect code. There is no such thing as perfect code. That's, what I, that's how I learned it. And there's always going to be flaws and things that people can... There's always going to be bugs. You can never write a piece of perfect code. You know? right. That may be line 10, go to 10. <laughs> there used to be we used to put jokes in the manuals at Peter Norton this is way back in the DOS days but if you see if you look in the menu of the of the Norton DOS editor did you ever use Norton Disk Editor uh, uh, Craig? yes I did okay it was a great product for its day it was it was the best disk editor it was a sector editor yep, but if you look in the if you have the reference the reference manual and you look in the back of it and you look up recursion, it will say C recursion. <laughs> you know, and that was the kind of that was the kind of jokes that we would put in there. So because we thought we were being really funny. So yeah, the, the, there's there's also there's a bunch of other things. There's uh golly, uh, Game Over Zeus is still making a lot of noise still after all these years. Uh, there's lots and lots of new things happening. I recently I was just speaking today at an ISSA conference and I was there to tell them that if I'm trying to secure a network, that I would look out for all the people who take home computers that belong to the company 
because that is a vector of infection. As you take the computer out of the firewall and you go to a Starbucks and you get infected with a or, you know, mobile device, right. you get infected, you bring it back inside the firewall and you infect inside the firewall. It's only a matter of time where somebody will build a targeted attack that goes through the local Starbucks to the company that they're trying to get into. Yeah. Um, oh, you, that, crickets are chirping out there someplace, Craig. I, I, I was just I was just looking at the uh, at the um, uh, chat room, and there was a couple of interesting comments that I got to distracted. There you go. <laughs> You're good with the sound effects. Let me open up the chat room here. I don't need to stare at my face all night. Yeah, exactly. Let's uh, see. So, uh, but the point is, uh, Jack said 10 print X. That would just print, that would just, X is undefined. It, it defaults to zero, and it would just, it would just say zero. And that's all it would do. Wouldn't do anything. You need, you need something that's recursive, like 10 go to 10. That would work, I say. Anyway, uh, um, so, so, this, we, 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 again, we're going back to the early days and back and forth here, but uh, so continue. I mean, look, I want to talk about some of the break-ins, and uh, recently I know Home Depot had one not too long ago, and what was the one that we just did the news story on? Oh, man, the latest one. Um, well, well, I know uh, Home Depot, that was their self-checkout line, and then there was a more recent one where, like, customers... Uh, no, no, the United States Postal Service. No, the Postal Service, that's it. The U.S. Postal Service got hacked. Wow, I didn't hear about that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Well, we get to inform you now. Yeah. Um, when was that? Before, was that today? No, no, that, that happened earlier this week. I think I want to say Monday. Um, that uh, that was a story that broke Monday, and the and the United States Postal Service uh, was hacked. And this did not involve any of the customers' data, you know, so they didn't get like debit cards or anything like that. But what they did hack was the per, uh, the personnel files of all of the USPS employees. So they were able to get um, anything that was on file, so addresses, emails, names, last names, uh, social security numbers w was a big one, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. And it's uh, w now. Like the 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 part where it gets kind of weird because you know you can get that there are vulnerabilities in any kind of system because if lots of people have access to it, that makes every single person that has access to it a weakness. You know they could be social engineered, they could, you know someone could guess their password or they could just you know have malware on their system somewhere else. But the odd thing is is that they said that this was a state funded hacking, whereas China was behind it. China. Well. And there wasn't ever any, um, you know, conclusive evidence. Like I'm sure they're in investigating it, and China never really owns up to saying, "Oh yeah, guys, we did that. Don't, uh, we're sorry." China doesn't really do, do that. So I mean, they're uh, they, they kind of just sat on it, and they haven't done much with it. Like they're trying to help their employees, you know, make sure that they're secure and they're not going to get, you know, become victims of identity theft. But yeah, I guess you know. Uh, I put, a whole link, point of bring, hmm? I put a link to the story in Maximum PC in the chat room, David. Yeah. You can, you get it. yeah. And, uh, and I guess, you know, to kind of turn all of this, this long story into a question would be, you know, state-funded hacking, how much of that do you know about, Mr. David? There is an awful lot of state-funded hacking. We got, we got hold of a lot of it. Um, when uh, Mr. Snowden was telling us about things, he disclosed an awful lot of U.S.-based hacking. Uh, they, we also know that there is state-based hacking in Russia, in England, in France, in Germany, in Brazil, in India, and in just about everybody else who can afford it. So you can bet Japan is doing it. And also, I would say... I tend to divide actors, you know, we refer to them as, as actors, the number of people who do things cyber into five silos, okay? The least, the least threatening one is hackers, because hackers are just doing things for the love of doing things. Following hackers, a little bit more dangerous than that, are hacktivists, who are hackers who are working for a political ideal. Uh, they might be likely to do things as a group that they would be unwilling to do things as individuals. Following that, you have criminals. And we've all talked about criminals over and over again here. And then just worse than criminals is corporations. 
Okay, corporations can do amazing amounts of stuff. A lot of what's happening with you on, say, for example, Facebook is corporations breaking your privacy for the purposes of doing ad research on you. But even though all they want to do is run an ad, it breaks into your privacy and may have repercussions in the future. And the very worst group of all is governments. The very worst group of all is governments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, not only not only have we seen governments spying on people, but we have seen instances where governments have performed sabotage, where they have sabotaged things. Uh, the the nuclear weapons plant in Iran was sabotaged by the U.S. and Israeli governments working together with Stuxnet. That's Everyone not, knows that. Yeah, that and that Stuxnet. I actually watched that they had a a whole hour uh, special on that on Nova about Stuxnet. Stuxnet. I did. I saw that. That was a great thing for Eric Shen, who's a friend of mine. Yeah, he, uh, that was the two guys from Symantec who yeah. found out about it, and the, and they couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, because it was it was so uh, uh, insidious about how this thing worked. Yeah. Uh, uh, and 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 they were saying that it couldn't have been written just by a quote unquote hacker. This had to be on a government level. Yes, we were all we were all like going back and checking our notes to make sure what was going on when that happened because that seemed unbelievable at the time. Now, of course, it seems perfectly believable, and I can tell you something. There are dozens of those of examples of those that I can't share with you. Dozens of examples where we where we know that there have been government space. Now, let me ask you: Why can't you share them with us? Because they'll come over for this reason or that. <laughs> okay, that's a good reason. That's a really good reason. I hear. I it. like both of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if something hasn't been publicly discovered, I am in no place to be the person who discover who uncovers it. And well, if you did, then you wouldn't that be more, uh, you know, publicity for you that you know David uh, uncovers this, these these. No, doesn't work that way. I could vanish. <laughs> you could vanish. Okay. <laughs> Um, you realize I actually, uh, you know, I used to go and speak in Russia all the time, go to conferences in Russia and speak there, and somebody from the FBI pulled me inside and said, don't go and speak in Russia, it's too dangerous for you, and I don't go there anymore. He pulled you aside and said that, you, did he show you your, his... You, his uh... He didn't need to, I knew he was in the FBI, he was a famous FBI guy. Oh, you know. So he, yeah. was, he was doing you a favor by saying yeah. that? Yeah, like you guys were like talking, or, or like you met up because of your travel and like the type of thing you do, and sort of like that. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to give you all the details on this. <laughs> well, we not to go back to Russia. The the Russian mafia does a lot of malware work, and and I'm out there saying, well, we've got to get rid of all these malware workers. If I cause them just a hint of trouble, they will get rid of me. Wow. Did um, did uh, we've had the FBI on the show? We did a thing. I, ben, you weren't on that, and I think uh, Charles Tindall was on at the time. We had him on. Which FBI agent did you have on? I can tell you. If I will go look at the calendar and because uh, I know mo I know a lot of the people in cyber in the cyber community in the FBI. Don't mess with Putin. Apparently, I guess is you know if, if anything tonight you walk away from computer. No, I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just a. Technical I, I, guy who goes out and gives lectures. I'm not a spy. I'm well, not. I'm not equipped to go into some place where it's dangerous for me to go. We had. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? Of course you are. You do magic. Slide of hand. You got this. We had from the FBI Security Division Nick Savage, who was. I um, do not know Nick Savage, but I've heard of him. Yes. Yeah, supervisory special agent for the FBI, and he yeah. was on, on the 30th of June of this year. Uh, was he in the studio with you? No, no, you don't have a studio anymore. Have a studio, no. But he was on with the 30th, and uh, and Nick Charles. Nick Savage doesn't he have a show on about Marvel no. and the agents? No, show? that's that's <laughs> Doctor Nick Savage. Fury. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, if an if an if an FBI agent has the word special appended to their name, special yes. supervisory agent means he supervises other special agents. But the word special means armed. He's armed, really? All the time. I was walking with Stacy Aruda, who is a special supervisory agent down in Tampa, and we were walking through a, a trade show, the the RSA show, and I said, "Does that really mean that you're armed?" And she pulled up her pants leg, and she had a badge. On the front of her shoe and a gun holster on the side of it. Uh, I thought you said we had with the garter. Oh, that's convenient. You know? <laughs> I had it in the garter or something. <laughs> no, no. And she's a very nice lady, and she's a mother of two, and, oh, and okay, all right, very, very nice person. You would I, like her a lot. Well, the first, when you say you pulled her, her skirt or whatever, like that's her skirt. 
Curse Chris. This was not J. Edgar I was dealing with. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Guys, get me in trouble. I don't want to be in trouble. I know. Well, you know, that's what we do here on the show. We get people in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Okay, so anyway, so the, well, yes. We, so we, I was out there today, and I was talking to them about mobile devices as being a threat. And, and we tend to think we've taught the public how to pay attention to things that are big and noisy. Do you agree? Yes, and also, but I have to stop you because we're at the bottom of the hour break, and then oh, okay. we'll, continue <coughs> we'll continue on. Okay. Listen to the uh, Computer America show, and we are on the uh, Blog Talk Radio Network, the Boost Radio Network, the IRN Radio Network. We're on all of the place. Um, David Perry is here with us um, from F-Secure. Uh, David is the threat strategist and spokesperson for F-Secure. We're going to come back and continue talking about mobile threats and celebrity things and password things and everything having to do with, with malware. Uh, we've got a news disc bulletin from Marty Winston coming up too. Stay with us. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional, quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-5415. That's 800-953-5415. 800-953-5415. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule, your company's getting ready for its IPO, and you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? Not so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. Howdy doody, it's Marty Winston with a news tips bulletin review for Computer America. This time, the GE Jasco and Brighton Lantern. It has the familiar profile of many earlier kerosene, white gas, or electric lanterns, but just about everything except the look shows major updates. It runs on four D cells in the base, cycles top down through three brightness levels as you press its single switch, and the handle loop has a detachment point so you can, for example, hang it from a branch or hook it on a bar. Optics here are simple but clever and effective. A central conical emitter. And that emitter housing is surrounded by a translucent diffuser shaped something like a snow cone. Now both of these are surrounded by a transparent lantern jar but capped with a reflective disc. As a result, the light distribution radially is even and omnidirectional for the broad brightness ring of direct light shine. Well, the top disc is reflecting a useful amount of light toward the downside, sending it downward to help you see what's around your feet and your path. At full brightness, 350 lumens, a set of alkaline D cells is rated to last 45 hours. At low brightness, make that 180 hours. Bottom line, the GE Jasco and Brighton LED Lantern is a great asset for days of light delivery using easy-to-find batteries with a shelf life measured in years. 
This is Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Uh, 33 minutes past the hour. David Perry here joins us, and we are talking about, I have absolutely no clue. Um, but, you know, uh, we were just talking uh, before the break. I remember something about spies and Russia and David Perry and... Uh, David, you're muted, so we can't hear you. Hicks Savage. <laughs> David, you're muted. We can't hear you. No, 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 no. There, am I back? Yeah, you're back. Yep, you're back. Okay. Yeah, we were all done with that. We talked about that already. We're not going to go okay. on and on about that stuff. No, uh, we were about to jump into a new topic, which... But mobile. Mobile. Uh... Mobile. Mobile. Okay, mobile. so we have been teaching you. We've been teaching the users to pay attention to something that affects a million people. And here's why. Is that I, is that it's my fault, my personal fault, because it's my job to get viruses in front of the press. And you know this. I've been doing this for years and years. And I've discovered that the press is always willing to talk about anything that has the word million in it. I can say, oh, there's a million people infected with this virus, and they will write a story. I can put it on the, the front page of the New York Times. And I'm going to tell you something that is absolutely true, that every virus expert in the world agrees with, and you can ask any of them. I can, I can call them up and get them on the phone right now, and they'll agree that a lot more people are affected by small attacks that only go out to three or four people than are affected by attacks that go out to a million people. There are more attacks that affect a thousand people, that affect a million people, and there are more effect, attacks that affect one person than affect a million people. So more people are infected by people who are only infecting one person than are affected by people who infect a million people. You are more likely to get infected by any individual attack against a million people because there's a million people in it, but you are far more likely to get infected by an attack that only infects one, million, one person because there are five or six times as many of those as there are attacks that affect a million people. Does that make sense? I, I, I mean, I it makes it sense. Like five times, but it's absolutely true. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense from a media, you know, like why the media does it. And, you know, I'm not really one for saying the media and bash on whatever, you know. You well, I'm not bashing on the media. They pay my bills, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but it's not a good story to say even more than this evil guy from Gdansk, you are likely to be infected by some idiot sitting next to you in the Starbucks running an evil twin attack. Well, it, it's it's more fun to, you know, not fun, but, you know, it, it's more newsworthy to say, you know, X amount of people, you know, contracted Ebola this this week, you know, when the number is 13, and then, the you know, the the seasonal flu infects, 10, you know, 10,000, 20,000 people a week. Well, I like to point out. I like to point out that more people have been married to Rush Limbaugh than have gotten Ebola. I know, it, and both are tragic. And uh, I will really like to point out that uh, heart disease kills eight million people a month, and cigarette smoking kills about that many, and that those are preventable diseases. There. Um, it, it, but 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 that's the whole thing about Ebola. But you know the analogy I think kind of stands where you know yes you know you hear about the heart bleed attack you hear about this you hear about that but it uh but in but in the end of the day you know I think heart uh, heart bleed was you know mainly targeted towards websites and big corporations and the average person is probably much more susceptible to a keylogger or a trojan or you know yeah. one of these more common things yeah and and even those the the thing you're most likely to be hit by is an individual hacker. Okay, do you go into, do you use a iPhone or a tablet? you have an Android tablet? Uh, I have an iPhone. You have an iPhone? And you go into public Wi-Fi places and run that iPhone and it uses the public Wi-Fi? Uh, school, but I mean, that's, you know, school and Starbucks, so I guess, yes. Public, yes, public. So you are in Starbucks. Any place that you take your mobile device and you log in without a password is wide open and anybody can sniff that. You know that. You know about sniffing. Yeah. You do not have to be a very big time hacker to do sniffing. You can download the tools online. They're they're available all over the world. And uh, you do not have to be a very big hacker to go out and do an evil twin attack where you sit in the Starbucks and you name your computer Starbucks and people log on to you thinking you're the Starbucks. Is that is it what transparent? I mean, there's nothing that Starbucks can do to stop people from doing that. 
Starbucks. Right. There is nothing that Starbucks can do to stop people from doing that. Okay. All right. So a lot of people do that. And then actually, the guy who's calling his computer Starbucks, he's logging his computer onto Starbucks, and you're just using him as an intermediary to sign into. And so they can in infiltrate as a man in the middle attack. They can grab all of the traffic that's going by, and they can read all of it. They can read all of it. Okay, Even if you're going to an encrypted website, you're not encrypted to your local login, so they can watch you. And so you are uh, pretty much uh, hosed. You get uh, all of your information is given to the bad guys right there, and there's no getting around it. Um, but I mean, like, especially with uh, with mobile devices, because you know computers we kind of know about. But what kind of information are they? Can they pull from? Like, you know, well, they might people, be call, people go system, into the but... Starbucks and shop online. Really? Or they go into Starbucks and they log on to their email. or they, Whatever you're doing, they can grab the credentials to, at the very least, and they can read your email. We once ran a test at some other company that I'm not going to mention by name, and we would walk into a coffee shop and walk up to a guy and go, you know, uh, we can tell that you're planning to quit your job. We just read it on your email. You know. I bet that's freaking me. Ah, don't do that to me. I hate you. That's why we quit doing that. <laughs> So that's why we're not doing that at this company, but it's very easy to do. This is something that junior script kitty hackers do, is this. Uh, yeah, um, I, I believe that most of the like, low-level low, low hacking that goes on, there are online resources, and in, in reality, it's just you know kids downloading tools to help them. Like, like just like uh, you don't have to be a professional to use Photoshop anymore. You can kind of learn it in your own time. You know, you don't have to be a full-fledged, you know, go to college, go to an under underground mafia to learn to be a hacker anymore. You can download the tools. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially stuff like that. You have to be, you want to be a quality pen tester. You better know some stuff. You better know some mathematics and know some stuff. But, but that kind of thing, easy to do. And you can, of course, also... There is a whole bunch of publicly there are a whole bunch of publicly available networks that have been compromised that somebody has gone in and taken control of and that they're using that network in order to capture data from it. That's a little bit step higher up the food chain from the other two that I just talked about, but an evil twin attack or a sniffing attack easy peasy. Anybody can do it. Anybody could do it. Any 10-year-old that wants to could do it. So what do you do? Because you've got a Wi-Fi only iPad. My iPad's Wi-Fi only. You guys don't have a Wi-Fi. Do you have a, a, a Android tablet, Craig? Uh, Craig, uh, Craig messed up for a second, but uh, he doesn't have a tablet. Uh, we pretty much just have, just have iPhones. We aren't really using tablets. Well, a, an I, a tablet, an iPad's just a big iPhone. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's just a big iPhone, and uh, yeah. So but I mean, I mean like. We, is there anything you can do other than just because... It, it, I'm even glad you that. asked me that. I'm so <laughs> glad you asked me that. I don't have any computers sitting here. I left them all downstairs. You can run a program called Freedome. F-R-E-E-D-O-M-E. -E -E. And I'm going to give you a code that will give you three months of this for free. In just a second. This is... Oh, like a code for like myself or code for our listeners and everyone? For everyone, yes. I've oh, code for everyone. I'm connecting you now. Oh, there Oops. we go. That would be helpful. Was that somebody disconnecting? No, no, that uh, that was the network. It's all good now. Um, but yeah, no, so code three months for everyone listening. So, you know. It's coming right up as soon as I find it. Uh, what Freedom is, Freedom is a VPN that also does other security things to your computer as your, let's see, right there, open up the PowerPoint slides and scroll, scroll down. This is all lowercase letters and numerals, all lowercase letters and numerals, and the, the code is XXCJ58. That's XXCJ58, all lowercase and numerals, no spaces. And you download Freedom, and you put that in, and you'll get three months of Freedom for free. Freedom costs $29 a year, normally, and uh, it is a wonderful thing. I'm using it. it. What it does is it puts a VPN, so your compute, your your iPhone or your tablet or even your laptop, as soon as we get this out for Windows... 
uh, is encrypted right from your computer all the way to Helsinki, Finland, and then back to the U.S., where it shows up under the same IP address as all of the other millions of people who are running Freedom. So it is a it anonymizes you. You are completely anonymous. It makes you invisible so that nobody can track you. And it does other things as well, but like blocking malware from your from your Android device or keeping your Android device or your iOS device from going to a bad website. So it is a complete security solution for the mobile device. And it's so, pretty inexpensive for that, $29 a year or $5 a month, but you get three months for free. Give it a try. And while you're trying it out, change the location of your device to England and go watch TV on the BBC. Yeah, it, um, you know that's kind of one of the things I wanted to bring up is you know we've talked about VPNs before. We actually had a sponsor who who was actually a provider of of a VPN, but I think it's always worth going over. You know what is the benefit of VPN and what exactly does it do? A VPN means a virtual private network, and what it really means is you are encrypting all of the all of the traffic between yourself and the end of the tunnel, the encryption tunnel. And in your case, we're picking you up right at the phone, and we are taking you through a security gauntlet and then putting you back down on the ground. But you put yourself back down on the ground, bundled together with everybody else using the service, so you are completely anonymous. No one can look at who's browsing the web and attach it back to you. Now, you have to be careful not to go on to... This does not make you immune from going on to... Uh, uh, Facebook and telling people everything about yourself. Yeah. You are still it, it, capable it, it. of throwing away your privacy, but this gives you privacy and puts it under your control personally. Yeah, I guess in a general sense, like it is, you know, obviously if, if you put in your username and your, you know, and your personal information, it's still going to get out there. It's don't, but I mean, but from a technology standpoint, you're not going to be leaving, you know, doors open. Well, I want you to notice that when you. Uh, F-Secure, which you may have not have ever heard before, but they're very well known in the antivirus business, is a very, very good company. They are located in Helsinki, Finland, and in Finland they have really strict laws about privacy. So we are not allowed to know even which of our, who is using Freedom. We don't keep any records on that at all. You bill to the to the App Store, and we get a check from the App Store. We don't know who the people are who are using Freedom. Not at all. This is we are not the company that's going to turn you over to the NSA. That's well, our, our our main spokesman in the whole world, our chief researcher Miko Hupanen, is very proud to say nobody at FSecure is going to turn you over to the government ever. And that does seem to be the the hot button thing, especially with as you mentioned earlier, Snowden. Governments tend to do scary things, not just governments, but even the average you know internet citizen out there is in danger from you know. Uh, I think we've gone from a culture of people saying, oh, you're using a VPN. You're obviously doing something really bad. Let's see what you're doing, and that's wrong, to now... Well, they do the that to people who are running Tor. You know about yeah. Tor, I'm sure. People are yeah. running Tor. Tor is the onion router, and it is a it is a VPN plus some other stuff uh, that actually re-encapsulates and re-encrypts several times over in a single instance. And that... Uh, if you once you start using Tor, the government starts watching you pretty fiercely. Yeah, which is you know, I mean, it's not always used for bad things. Uh, you know, admittedly, it's it, people. I know people who just use it simply for privacy, and they take it very seriously. So it's good to see that you know, uh, F Secure taking a step in the direction of you know, better safe than sorry. You know, we're not going to be the weak link in you getting in trouble or you just being invaded, your privacy being invaded. It's not going to be F secure. We're going to try to make it as you know good as possible. Yes. Yeah. Well, so here is the thing: uh, uh, is that F, you know, freedom. We looked for a long time, and we we produced antivirus for for mobile devices, but it it's clear that viruses are not going to be the the main thing in mobile software. It's just, they're just not going to be. And there's a good reason for that. The reason that, that it's not going to be about viruses is that there's no majority kind of operating system at all. Does that make sense? In the mobile space? In the mobile world, there really isn't. Yeah. I mean, you could say we, that... Uh... 
Yeah, no, we just did a story about this that you know we just mentioned it last night, and we did it again Monday, where they actually came up with like the latest uh, you know uh, market share pretty much for for mobile devices, and it was like iOS, the one that gets billed so much and so often as you know kind of people people kind of say you know smartphone iPhone entertain interchangeably, that's more marketing than actual market share because iPhones really only hold about. Eight, nine, ten percent of the market, but they and hold the 80... largest share of any piece of hardware. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But um, okay. But the uh, the Android actually has eighty six percent market share. But it's not all one thing. Exactly. You know, the, there are distros of, of of Android that are different than other distros of Android, so it becomes quite difficult to separate one distro from another distro. It's the same thing that Apple has put up for for years. I mean, when they compare it to Windows, they would say, uh, you know, oh, Windows has eighty some odd percent of the market, or whatever it is. And, and uh, but you know, it's not the same computer. It's just it's it's the operating system, but it's not the. Whereas with Mac, it's all this. With Apple, it's the same computer basically. So, um, right. Uh, you know. But I want you to understand, Windows does represent what we call a digital monoculture. It is a majority operating system that can all be attacked the same way, and the people using it tend to run exactly the same apps, the same applications. They're running Office. They're running, you know, uh, Photoshop. They're running all of the things that they're running. They're running them exactly the same. Yeah, I guess. So you know, there is a there is a large need for people to to wake up and see this is different, that is different, the other thing is different. People need to see what it is that's different from one operating system to another or from one thing to another. In this case, we have not got a uh, we have not got a majority operating system and in the iOS world all of the apps are coming from inside what we like to call a walled garden, okay, where where Apple is taking care of the security of the apps. If I want to put an app up on the Apple store, on the App Store, I have to give them the source code three months before I'm allowed to sell it, and they go through it and play with the source code and make sure that it's not rotten. You know, they didn't used to do that. I mean, what was the famous one? Some kid wrote a little uh, flashlight piece of software for the iPhone, and it went and it turned out it had a back door and it had some. Uh, it allowed you to do. Actually, no, that's an Android story. No, but there was also for the Apple too. That, that oh, really? I didn't. I did not know that that was in the Apple, and I just did a whole paper on the on the flashlight <laughs> problem. Yeah, they had they, they had something where the little kid wrote this, and and it had a back door, would allow them to do something. Nah, that wasn't you really can't you can't get something into the into the iPhone App Store without giving the source code to Apple three months well, ahead of time. This was before the App Store. I mean, this had just had come out. I mean, the iPhone it, it, it was like the first generation, and uh, and and the written and it had so and Apple wasn't used to that, and so it got by them. Of course, never and never again. But this was way way back. I think when you the show me a reference, or I don't believe it. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll find it. <laughs> you dig it up and show it to me, and I'll believe it. But I'm I'll look for it. I'm not buying it. I'll look for it. Information is good, but uh, it, it, even though you know, even so, Apple they still get you know a, a couple apps here and there that aren't secure. So, and they erase them. They've got a button that lets them pull all of them in the whole world off of the all of the phones in the world in a single push. Yeah. Apple can pull off any any app from all the iPhones that aren't jailbroken in the world. Hmm. So. Uh, right. in, the, in the in the in the in the app store, I've always had to like five six years ago. Even I was having to give the give give the source code to Apple three months ahead of time. They they backwards engineered your product through the source code. So, I guess it's pretty secure compared to something like um, Android. Here it is, Android, <laughs> which is the Wild West. Here it was. It, it was on Gizmodo. It says how a fifteen year uh, year old kid. Tricked Apple with a disguised iPhone. It was a tethering app. That's right. It allowed you to. This was before tethering was really allowed. Eight, and it was a, it was really a big deal. And AT and T was charging, and so he actually wrote a tethering app inside disguised as an as an iPhone uh, flashlight. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And, and here, it's on Gizmodo. Yeah, and it's on Gizmodo. I'm I'm going to put actually put a link to that in the uh, chat room right now. Although I see you're not in the chat room now for some reason. You dropped out. Uh, why did you drop out of the chat room? Uh, because I did. Okay. Anyway, there's the link. Uh, so, but that's what it was. I remember it, and I remember it because I would have could have used something like that because you had to pay AT&T a lot of money to you know do tethering way back when, 
And so that's why he wrote it. And of course, now you can you can do tethering on your iPhone with no problem. I don't I don't think there's an additional charge. It's part of the, whatever service plan that you're on, um, depending on the company that you're using it with too. Um, um, I have never really used my iPhone as a, uh, for tethering. I think the whole tethering thing. The only thing that matters, like unless you have access to Wi-Fi and you're starting to use 4G and 3G, it's just going to suck up all of your data. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, it does use a lot of data. And uh, but in fact, I heard a lot of people were really angry because they went to uh, they went to uh, to their iPhone and they were out of data because you two had given them a free album. <laughs> I Did yeah. You I, listen to the U two album. I have. I don't like it. Okay. Now, is this the one that they just provided to every iPhone out there? The yeah, that was, yeah, Craig, that was the one that you were gushing over at the uh, at the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus announcement thing. Yeah, I didn't gush over it. I just said that, 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 that YouTube didn't believe that it was actually happening. He, he was on stage with uh, with uh, Tim Cook, and he said, and Tim Cook said, where are we releasing? He says, it's happening now, really? And he said, yep. It's ha so everybody who had – and I never, I never found the album on my iPhone. To this day, I can't find it. Uh, but and then Tim Cook comes out of the closet and says that he's gay. Oh well, yeah, there's that too. But that... And then a week later, the head of of Samsung came out and said he's twice as gay and he's waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> They're so competitive. They're so competitive. There were there were a lot of good jokes, uh, like not you know against gay jokes, but you know just against like pitting Apple between all the other manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just a. Uh, what, what was it like? Uh, Tim Cook coming out as gay was was in response to Ben Gate. How you know he? <laughs> what, what was it? Uh, and I no. Tim Tim Cook is straighter than an iPhone six. Oh, that's funny. That's it. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Okay. Uh, but yeah. That, 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 so this, we were this. just talking, Craig. While you weren't here, we were talking about uh, freedom, which I've talked about on the show before, and I gave out a code. So people can get it for three months for free. Oh, cool! All that right. was very nice. The very nice of I of, of F Security give me a three month code to give Did out. You put, the, put the code. Uh, I I should put the code in the show notes too. What is the code? Uh, now I have to go get the show the code again. Oh, oh. it was like X X J C. Did you put it in the chat room? I'm not. I'm not even gonna say it because I'm gonna mess it up. Okay. I'll get it. Don't worry about me. Okay, put it in the I'll chat. I'll be right here with it in just a second. I'm not going to reload the chat room. Oh, you're not. Okay. Chat room, chat room crashed because of something else I was running in my. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> right. XXCJ58, lowercase letters. XXCJ58. Okay, that's, that's code. XCJ58. XXCJ58. Okay, and I'm going to put that code in the uh, uh, for three for for three for a free three month trial. And again, completely for mobile. So you said it's already covered Android, pretty much. It's Android and and PC. Well, look, here's the thing: is in Android, um, there. For example, I just have a story here about a kid who took a bunch of popular programs and turned them into Trojanized versions. And I have a picture of Angry Birds home screen and his Angry Birds home screen, and they're identical. I don't know which one is which, but the kid was Gilbert eight three three two. And he put in a copy of Ninjago, Ninjago Lego, Minecraft, Plants vs. Zombies, Grand Theft Auto 3, Heyday, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, The Sims 3, Pro Hawker, Hockey, uh, uh, PES 2012 Pro Soccer, and Asphalt 6 Adrenaline, among others, Doodle Jump, among others. And uh, we, we found out that this kid was trojanizing these things and let the Google Play Store know and they wiped him out and immediately two other people show up with the same stuff. Okay, just, so there is there is lots of things that you are downloading that you are thinking is the real Angry Birds, but it's not Angry Birds, it's a Trojan built into Angry Birds. Uh, wow. By the way, I put that code in our show notes at computeramerica.com for a free three month right. trial F secure. Get that free three month trial. Now and if you're gonna get if you're gonna get a new iPhone or a new tablet for Christmas for yourself or for someone in your family, uh you, you might want to think about the fact that you are possibly ruining their privacy by getting them that and thinking about doing something to protect that machine. And that's that's what I'm here to talk about, really. I'm here to talk about the privacy that you can get. 
on your mobile devices by running Freedom. Yeah, and protect and protection exactly. Yeah. And uh, Freedom is spelled F R E E D O M E. Dome, like free dome. Okay. Yeah, they're Finnish. What can I say? Actually, they thought it was funny. They thought, you know, freedom, like cyber, like uh, like uh, uh, Thunderdome. And I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, let's have some herring. No, it was it was great. They're they're wonderful, wonderful people. I love working at this company, mm -hmm. and we we do eat an awful lot of herring in Finland. Herring. Really? You go to breakfast. Oh, they have five or six kinds of herring at breakfast. You have. So you've actually been to you know Finland. Oh yes, several times, many times actually. Over the years, I've been there many times. In fact, have you ever had a red, have you ever had a red herring? You're funny. You're funny. <laughs> I'm just curious. Hey, we're I'm married to a redheaded woman. We're at the top of the hour here, so we're gonna take a break just for a moment, and then we'll continue on. David Michael Perry uh, is here with us for both hours, and uh, we're talking about malware. He is the because he's the threat strategist and spokesperson for F Secure. And uh, uh, we'll continue on with them right after the, the, this quick break, just momentary. We'll be right back. You're listening to Computer America. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight. Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour is behind us, but there's still more of tech news. And more phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You've got computer problems? You're listening to America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at ComputerAmerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And we're continuing on with uh, David Perry. He is from F-Secure, and he is the uh, threat strategist, strategist for F-Secure and... Uh, um, uh, we're talking about malware uh, and uh, what you can do to protect yourself uh, from malware. And uh, and um, he is with us. Actually, he he's, yeah, he's just coming back now. Uh, hey, hello. <laughs> Hi, that's a that. This is a shot of espresso. I have an espresso machine here in my office. Well, we had to mute you uh, when you went away because you were making all kinds of noise with your headsets. So. That was intentional. Yeah. I, I thought I had muted myself, but no, oh, I guess I didn't. No, no. Well, so we unmuted you now, and uh, everything is working fine again. Uh, if you're just joining us again, David is preparing from uh, F Secures. I always want to say Trend Micro for some reason with you, and because uh, I don't used say to... Trend Micro. Uh, exactly. This is a dead toad, by the way. Don't lick it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Put your hand in the air. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, um, um, well, we, we, I had to cut you off just at the top of the hour, <laughs> uh, David. So uh, what will you, you continue on with what you were talking about? We were talking about mobile devices, and we were talking about Android devices. There are There is some malware on Android devices, so Freedom for Malware for Android also does, in the cloud, malware scans. So anytime something is coming to your machine, it gets scanned in the cloud. We don't know who you are, we don't know what you're connecting to, but everything that goes through us gets scanned for malware. Gets scanned for, and like, you're pulling these definitions from... From our labs. Oh, oh! So we're the you, biggest, you we're the biggest mobile, we're the biggest mobile uh, anti-malware lab in the world. In fact, in Helsinki, Finland, where the where F Secure is, in their labs, where where Miko works and Sean and all of those people, they actually have a big old Faraday cage that they test um, uh, mobile malware in, because there there have been mobile malware that spread through via Bluetooth connections. Spread through Bluetooth connections, so, I, I mean... So that... one computer would actually infect the computer sitting next to it by logging into it as Bluetooth and infecting it. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, I've actually heard of a couple hacks, especially some that made, you know, headlines, and uh, these were hacks that, you know, access smartphones through Bluetooth and, uh, and things like that. And I, I keep wanting to think there was like a, there was like a card thing, like a, privacy thing where you could no it, it, it 
No, I'm trying to think of a scanner where like it was like a debit card and you could take your phone or like this little device and scan cards. No, but Bluetooth, Bluetooth. What kind of malware? Like like what kind of mal? What does malware do on a phone? Because on a computer, you know, you may see it slowing down, you may see it doing doing that kind of thing. What? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, Ben. There's malware that does a lot of different things on a phone. There's malware that actually captures your phone and makes long distance phone calls to toll services. You know, like uh, you know, porn numbers and stuff like that, where where money can be collected from them calling that number. Okay. There is malware that turns your phone into a Bitcoin miner. That's, that's not nearly a... as, not nearly as bad as the malware that turns your DVR into a Bitcoin miner. Wait, they have that? Oh yeah. I have. I, I we hadn't heard about that one yet. Yeah, there's malware that turns DVRs into Bitcoin miners. It turns out video cards are what you need to do Bitcoin mining kind of operations. And what's funny is that you know the, the malware is all kind of proofs of concept because you're not going to compete with those gigantic server farms bursting into flames all over the country. You know oh, about yeah. the gigantic server farms? Yeah, yeah, where people rent out like warehouses and they buy equipment. They're just huge. Yeah. Yeah, there was one in China that just burst into flame recently because they had overloaded the thermal, you know, capabilities of the warehouse that they were in. But they were running 65 or 70,000 computers all at once to to in parallel to Bitcoin mine. This is why you're not going to make any money Bitcoin mining. Yeah, I, I I was just thinking that. I mean, you know, the average person is supposedly more than welcome to you know set their computer up with this program, you know, set it up with a wallet, set it up with a program, and let them start mining. But when you actually think about people who you know rent out ten thousand square feet, twenty thousand square feet, and set up huge servers and huge computers just to and do huge Bitcoin refrigeration mining, equipment. Yeah, and that kind of well, hopefully most of the time. I mean, it's a uh, I don't, I don't know how the average person is supposed to compare or even compete you're with not, something like that. You're not. You're not. There used to be there used to be a program called Fortune Cookie. Do you remember that program, uh, Craig? Craig uh, actually had to step away yet again. Okay, but, uh, there used to be a program called Fortune Cookie that would read you fortunes every time you booted up your computer. And one of them said, you can't win, you can't break even, you can't even quit the game. And that's about what Bitcoin is about. And I'm... I'm, I keep meeting more and more people who go to Bitcoin meetings and they're just, by jingo, they're going to make a fortune in Bitcoin. And I think when I was a kid, people used to raise chinchillas thinking they were going to get rich raising chinchillas. I'm sure that... They're very soft, at least. What? They're very soft, at least. They're fur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't compete with commercial chinchilla farmers was the problem. But I That's actually true. knew people with chinchillas in their living room. And it was uh, it was a wacky time, and you know, and then you, then you get then you get the people who you know they listen to the radio, and they're gonna you know they're gonna put out the the guy with the question marks all over his jacket. They're gonna put in for government loans, and they read something. They're sending money off to Nigeria. Phineas Tyler Barnum, the great the great showman of Amer of the American Gilded Era, once said it, and it's just as true now as it was then. That no one ever lost a dollar by underestimating the edge, the uh, intelligence of the American public. That's a mean thing for him to say. Yeah. And he also said, "There's a sucker born every minute." That's a famous one. Yeah, that's the famous one. The other one, though, is more to the point. You know. Yeah. No one ever lost a dollar by underestimating the intelligence of the American public, which means people have lost money by overestimating the intelligence of the American public, but not underestimating. So, it's a it is a very easy thing to uh, to find in the world malware. Malware is is pretty much ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's on everything that you're running. And uh, people use it for all different purposes. What's interesting to me is that people who are coming from a different position in the world are using it for different purposes. For example, if you are coming from a government, your malware might do something entirely different than what a criminal would do with malware. And that's yeah. very different than what a hacker would do with malware and so on. That's how they kind of think, uh, you know, point the finger at the, the hack with the United States Postal Service and how they thought it was safe fun. It was because, you know, uh, apparently Eastern Europe, Western Europe, just Europe in general, 
if you're going to get an attack from there, it's going to be aimed at getting your your, your payment information, you know, your your credit card, your debit card, that kind of thing. Do you know and why that is? Why why is that? That's because we have less protection on our payment information than any other country in the world. Do we? Yep. Maybe that's why uh, you know Apple Pay and things like that are you know trying Apple to get Pay so much traction. Is a huge jump forward for us. There's a big problem that everybody else in the world has got at least chip and pin for decades now. And many of them have two-factor authentication. Many of them, you know, call your cell phone to ask if you want to approve this sale. You know, when the sale is done on a, a POST, or they, you know, they give you a, a pad of one-time codes. In the U.S., it's your signature and nothing else. You know, we're the yeah. we're we are the lowest security com country in the world, and at the same time, we. We shuffle around the biggest amounts of, of capital and currency. So we have bigger money moving around with less protection than anywhere else in the world. That's why that's why people from, you know, France and Italy and Russia and Brazil do their business in fraud in the United States. Oh well, yeah, I mean, you know, biggest target, easiest to you know, it's I least can totally see why why it is. Yeah. Least protected and the biggest target at the same time. So I guess everything that we're talking about tonight kind of goes doubly if you live in America. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So what do you what do you do about it? You, it's up to you to protect your data. It's a, it's only you is are going to look out for it. I hate to sound like Smokey the Bear, but only, only you, <laughs> only you can prevent can prevent this happening to you. And you have to start by realizing that you're putting information online, and the information you put online you can't ever get back. It can never be brought back. If you put an address online, it's online forever, forever and ever. So yeah. if, you put, uh, if you put your payment information online, it's online forever and ever. So before you put something on Facebook, think about it. Now, yeah, that's, my, that's, my, that's my rant and rave and yelling at people for the night. Although even your even Europe, you know, and we're talking a lot about Europe because uh, malware isn't just a local thing; it's no. a global thing. No, you know, in fact, just... I was just looking at ransom ransomware from Poland and ransomware from Germany, and there's all there's all the same scams running everywhere. And what's funny about them is that they are actually just new versions of old con games that have been around forever. There's nothing really new about any of them. They they're the old con games just done over and over and over. Well, I mean, it, the the point isn't to be, isn't to be you know genius, isn't to be engin you know be ingenuitive, okay? But I mean, it's just to get your your information and to get your money. They they don't have to be clever about it. If they can find a weakness somewhere, they can exploit that, and, and their job is done. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, they a lot of times they're completely sloppy. I'm, I'm sure you remember when all of the spam email and the phishing email you would get came in very bad English. It looked like it was being written by Boris and Natasha, who are making big trouble for moose and squirrel, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, all of the emails, uh, you know, from Nigerian princes and whatnot, they were actually purposely designed, you know, because honestly, you could probably pay an English major who is currently either A, jobless, B, a waiter, to you know, rewrite your email to you know look somewhat decent, but the reason they did it was they did not was because they wanted it to look sloppy. They wanted it to look you know lowest common denominator, so that if anyone ever got the hint that this might be real, then they're probably equally gullible enough to actually put in their you know their bank information. I have a question, Craig. Yeah, isn't it time for us to give away something? Whatever you want to do, but, uh, David. Uh, I, I thought it was time for the listener of the month, or the. No, 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 that's Friday. <laughs> it's not Friday yet, Craig. It's it's like Ben. I'm so <laughs> confused, man. It's not Friday yet. Tried to do this last night. Is it w rubbing off onto you too? <laughs> it seems like Friday somehow. Well, because normally you're on with us Fridays, you know. Because, uh, because but but no, it's Thursday, you know, and uh, so. Uh, uh, we that happens tomorrow night. Ben, it was Wednesday, and we had Sandy Berger, a consumer electronics expert, and, and coming back from the second hour break, he says, "Okay, and now it's that time of the." <laughs> you know, the I was joking. I know. Was David joking too? No. <laughs> I was just hoping I could do something where I could stop talking for five minutes. 
<laughs> the um, here is here is my question. We're going to be at uh, at uh, Showstoppers. Yes, Showstoppers. Yes. Uh, okay. I there's there's two ways this can go. If my company needs me, I will be sequestered in their booth. If they do not need me, I'll be available to take a shift in the booth. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the badge that I get as a correspondent of Computer America. What does it feel? I'm, what does it feel like to be sequestered? Um. It yeah. Well, it means that I would be working for, ah. for my job. <laughs> but you have Sandy and Charles will be there. Is Ben gonna go this year? Hopefully he maybe he Hopefully. will. Hopefully we're working on it. We're working okay. on. It. Uh, yeah, exactly. Get your get your flight as soon as possible because they go up in price as the date gets closer. Yeah, we know this, but uh, uh, money is no object. <laughs> so you say. I always stay at the Orleans, which I highly recommend. It's a ten dollar cab right away from the win, and you'll get a room, a really good room for a what, good price. What about and the, what I like about the Orleans is there's a movie theater there, and so I can go to the movies instead of go out and gamble. What about the Luxor? Isn't that a nice? I mean, that's a Luxor's nice. Luxor's extremely expensive hotel. Uh, how is it closer or further away? It's you know it's on the strip. Anything you're going to do on the strip is going to take longer than doing something from off the strip. But you well, could do the Luxor if you want to. Sure. Well, here's the thing. Uh, what, uh, when my wife and I go to Vegas, uh, we go to uh, a hotel. We go to the Four Seasons, and you go, oh, there's no Four Seasons out of that. Well, no, but, I, knew that. I knew that. Yeah. It's hidden away. It's 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 got its own entrance to the main hotel that 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 it backs up against, and there are no slot machines in it. There's nothing. It's just like you're in a really nice, quiet hotel. Uh, and we we actually spent our honeymoon there because it was so nice. It was just nice. Non Vegas kind of thing, but it's right on the strip, and you overlook the strip, and you can see the strip and everything. But it's like it's sequestered away. It's like a private. Entrance and it was just really really nice. So um, you see, I like to stay as far away from the strip as possible. In fact, I stay at the uh, Green Valley Ranch Inn, which yeah. is 15 miles from downtown Las Vegas. That's too far, that's too far away. Yeah, uh, but I, I I you know when I'm staying in downtown Las Vegas, I stay at the Orleans because I don't want to ever drive on the strip or have it take a taxi on the strip because it can take an hour to go a block on this on the strip if you hit that at just the wrong time of day. Well, here's the thing. If Ben goes out there, it's going to be his first time out there, and I want him to really enjoy the ambiance of the strip. I want him to get the full flavor of it. Right on. And he can't do that from 19 miles away. So. Right. Okay. No, but the the Orleans is two blocks away. It's at Tropicana and Arville. Okay. But All right. Take a look at it. But the uh, you can still get to the strip in nothing flat. But you do. What happens is, you know, I'm going to one conference or another. Mm -hmm. And they just take me around the corner to the strip. You know, I I go up or down Arville or Industrial to get to the strip. Mm -hmm. I have family in Vegas. That's how I know this. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, you know, I wonder what it would or be. put him on the strip if he wants to stay. If he wants to stay at the Luxor, that's a very that's a very hoity-toity strip hotel. It's nice. <laughs> it's got the whole thing. It's got the elevators that are scary. Yeah, I know. They they go oh, they go in, that in they go diagonal. It's just very, very strange because it's it's a pyramid. So the it's yeah, it's really strange. They used to have a really cool 3D ride there, but I don't know if they do anymore. Yeah, I remember it was in the lobby, and you go on a gondola, and it, and it was kind of. Uh, but you were supposedly on the Nile, the River Nile, you know, and, and it was. A, they keep changing things though. That they keep they add things, take things away. You go away for Vegas for for uh, six months or a year, and you come back, and usually things have changed pretty quickly. So. It's been yep. a while since we've been there. It's been about six years. So, so. Um, well, why don't you come out to to Vegas some year? I am. I'm, I plan to definitely, and it may be this year. I I really don't know. But although, quite frankly, I, I, one of us has to stay back and anchor the show. So that's what usually happens. So, if anything, I'll be sending Ben out, and, and maybe uh, um, um, our webmeister Aaron and uh, Carissa, which is who is our booking goddess. We, uh, I mean, if things go well, we might we we might get them all out there. So, uh, but I know Charles is going to be out there. I've already spoken to him and. Uh, and uh, Sandy Berger. So if you come, you can spend some time at the castle. Oh well, yeah. I mean, of course. And now Ben's over twenty-one. He'll be he'll be able to get in. I can't remember. Last come to the Magic Castle. castle right? I'll introduce you to some people. No, it's it's just you're a lot closer to Hollywood. Oh, right? okay. I got you. Okay. He met it's, Elf. It's he a four-hour drive. 
He met El Ropo, so that that's that's the ult- penultimate for. I'll probably go visit with El Ropo tomorrow. I'm going to be up there tomorrow afternoon, oh, so oh, I might oh, visit with El tell, Ropo. Tell him we said hi. He won't remember us, but tell him tell him we said hi anyway. Uh, okay, so. Uh, um, oh yeah, that goony looking feller. That's how. El Ropo <laughs> ben is not goony looking. All right, so. Oh, I wasn't hey. talking about Ben. <laughs> uh, so. So where are we? So we're t- we're talking about Vega, uh We're talking about uh, well, we were talking about malware in and and we were t- and we were saying there's malware that that does Bitcoin mining. There's malware that calls expensive phone calls. There's now uh, ransomware that is just like the ransomware that we have here, only it is for phones and it is in Poland and Germany. And I have a slide that I can't show you because I can't show slides on this thing. Yes, you can. Uh, uh, well, we'll, do, we'll work that out some other day, okay? We, we don't want to stop and, and repatch with only 40 minutes left of the show. <laughs> okay. Um, but I've got, a, I've got a slide that shows um, this ransomware that is, that is saying, um, uh, Polish police have detected that you are looking at porn and you have 24 hours to pay this bail or we're going to destroy all of your data. And that's similar to uh, ransomware that we have here in the United States. Well, that's a, you know you go on to to check your computer and it says we found 415 uh, viruses and malware on your and and for 30 to 95 we'll remove it you know or or, or we replace way, that. Gentlemen, that is never real. That isn't real. That that's isn't not. ever real. That is. I just want to tell you. And if your phone rings and they say they are a tech support line calling you, Liars. that is not real either. Tech support lines don't call you. Not ever. Ever. Not ever, ever. Yeah, I mean because I mean they've got. And t- I worked in tech support for 25 years. They've got a whole room full of people answering the phone as fast as they can, saying no, uh, unplug it and plug it back in. That's that's all you do. Talk to you later. Bye. Hi. Pl- unplug it and plug it back in. Call me later. Bye. <laughs> Hi. Unplug it. Plug it back in. Call me later. Bye. And they've got they've got depending on the company, they've got between 100 and 1,000 people doing just that all day, and that's what tech support is. You can usually get away without having a tech support call by reading the FAQ. If you can find the FAQ to a product that you're using, I bet you $100 that your problem that you're having, that you think you're the only one in the world who are having it, is the number one problem listed on that FAQ, Craig, whether cough, you cough, recognize Craig. it or not. Craig, cough, cough, Craig, cough, cough, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> Craig, Craig, ha- Craig has this thing which may be, uh, you know, a lot of people also feel, Craig doesn't like talking to phone trees and or bots and or automated systems. He's like, just get me on the phone with someone I can yell at. And, 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 and that's, that's his go-to. You know, I used to be, I used to manage at Cyber Media, I used to manage about 150 tech support people. And only the meanest, baddest people who were making my agents cry would end up talking to me, and I would just, I would be really mean right back to people. You know, I would say, sir, we're not here to be your therapist. Uh, you know, it's your problem is you have the wrong version of Windows to run this. What you need is to download driver.sys. It's in your, you know, it's in your directory, I'm sorry, you're going to have to edit your auto exec bat and your config.sys. Are you ready? Do you want to do that right now? I want to know, blah, 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 blah. No, nobody's going to pay you for the time you were on hold. I've got a $75,000 a day telephone bill just from running this call center. Yeah. And what, what, I mean, people should get. What's funny is occasionally I get somebody who would say, "How come I'm having so much trouble getting through to your tech support department?" That's what they want to complain about. Is they finally get me. I'm the the head of tech support. They want to complain about how long I said, "Okay, where are you?" I'm in Santa Monica. Right on. I'll give you our address. Come in, and they would look around and they would apologize because they would see all these people sitting at phones with a headset on, going, "Yes, plug it in, turn it back on. Yes, plug it in, turn it back on. Yes, plug it in, turn it back on. Yes, plug it in, turn it back on." They go, "How often do they do that?" I go all day long. Can't you just use a recording? No, you wouldn't listen to a recording. You refuse to listen to a recording three times before you put you through to the agent, which is why we're doing that, is that there's 88.7% on the average, this is from the Help Desk Institute, of all calls that come into a a tech support line are the same question. 
with the same answer. Oof. So, and that's averaged among all the all of the uh, tech support lines in the Software Support Professionals Association in the SSPA, and there's thousands of those. So that is a lot of them. It is a hundred percent of the calls that they get are the same question. And we try it. You know, we put it in the FAQ. We put it in the the writing on the disk. You know, and people would call up. People would call up Norton and they go, "I'm my you, my system crashed after I put Norton on it." I go, "Yeah, are you running a Dell?" They go, "Yeah, how'd you know?" And I said, "Uh huh." And you used to have McAfee on it. Yeah, how'd you know? I said, "Didn't you see the sign that says you have to remove McAfee before you can run our install?" They go, "No." You by the way, every one of them. Here's a public service announcement from me. Uninstall every other antivirus software when you install a new antivirus software on your machine, always, Definitely. without any exception. Because yeah. that is the source of virtually every call that comes into the tech support lines for antivirus software. They already have a different antivirus on there. Okay, like the people who are like, I'm super secure. I have, I have four different antivirus programs. And why does my computer run at a crawl? Because <laughs> they're all hooking interrupt 21 and interrupt 17. What's an interrupt? Yeah, you don't deserve to have a computer. <laughs> but no, I you know it's it's not that bad. I have I do not have contempt for these people. Nobody told people have been led to believe that a that a computer is going to be as easy to run as a television set, and it's just not true. There's a lot of stuff you have to know before you're an expert computer user, and uh, and just to do the things you want to do, just to check your balance at your bank, and and just to you know do your word processing and get through your your college classes, you need to be at least an expert user of a computer, if not an expert programmer of a computer, but an expert user. You have to be expert in the use of a, of a digital computer because there's a lot of things that need to be done on a regular and continuing basis with that computer. Yep. So, Ben, you, of course, have reformatted a hard disk by now. Yeah. And more than it. once, too. Oh, more than once, and every time it was my fault. Right on. <laughs> it, it, it's. I mean, I think learning how to use a computer isn't so much reading a manual, finding a for dummies, finding a for idiots guide. You know, none of that. It's messing it up. Break your computer. Download that virus. You know, do something wrong, and then you won't do it again. I agree. I agree. But but be willing to admit that you've done something that you weren't supposed to do. Oh yeah, that's the. There used to be there used to be a sign up at a company. I'm not even going to tell you what company because it's inflammatory. That said, rule one: users lie. Really? And then and then another company I worked at in the tech support department. There was a sign up, and I I stole the sign. It's here in my office someplace that says, rule one, and there's a bottle of sh of shoe polish, and it says this is Shinola. Oh, <laughs> uh. which I thought that was pretty funny. I thought that was funny. I should say that like Joe Pesci. I thought that was funny. That was a funny, funny thing. Is that what you're telling me? I'm a clown. I'm here to make you laugh. Is that what you're saying, Craig Grossman? <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my Joe Pesci impersonation. It's not bad. Good yeah. thing I don't do impersonations for a living, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's a very good thing. So, right, so there's things you have to learn, and one of the things you have to learn is that you're going to be running antivirus software. I hear from people, I don't use antivirus anymore. The guy from Norton said antivirus is dead. Did you see that when he said that, Craig? No. Yeah. Uh, a guy from he, Norton said antivirus is dead, and a, the next day he went to work for General Motors. <laughs> I think he got the message from, from Norton about what's going to happen. He was working at Symantec and he went out and he said antivirus is dead. Now what he meant was completely valid. What he meant was there's nothing anymore that's just a pure antivirus solution and there's better solutions in the world and he went on to say there's no there's no uh, revenue growth in antivirus which is absolutely true if you're selling two billion copies a year there's no revenue growth for you but for those of us who sell slightly less than that, there's plenty of revenue growth ahead of us, especially when people drop off of Symantec because their CEO or their, their VP said that uh, it's dead. So antivirus is dead. The only reason we call products antivirus still is so that you people can find them on the shelves. You're going to be running a security program on your Windows machine for the foreseeable future. And the ones that you get for free are not bad, but none of them are as good as the ones that you pay for. 
And there are tests that prove this and prove it over and over again. So go out, take a look at the tests. If the free one is only doing 80% of the samples that are being found, you don't want that. You don't want to be only detecting 80% of the things because that means 20% of the things are able to infect you on a day-to-day -day basis. And with a million new ones every day, mm -hmm. that's, an, that's a mighty huge margin. That is a mighty, mighty huge margin. So yeah. um, do you have any questions, Craig? Can I we did. talk about other television shows? We can, but I'll tell you what, we're at the bottom of the hour, so we're going to take a break. Oh, uh, good. Just real quick here, uh, for those of you listening, uh, make sure that you've entered in all of our contests. They're in full swing. Just go to our contest page. It's right under the Interact uh, uh, page and click the, the for Logitech, click the Register button. You'll see our three pri great prizes we're giving away, including an official Computer America contest entry form that we now have. No more emails. You can just enter into the contest right there on the same page. Uh, the grand prize is the Logitech X300 mobile wireless stereo speaker valued at $70, and it comes in four colors, and you as a winner can pick the color. Isn't that nice? And, of course, that's, uh, the second place prize is the uh, Logitech G400 OS as optical gaming mouse. and uh, Just enter in all of our contests. They're all free, no obligation. You'll have a lot of fun doing so, and who knows? You might win something really, really nice. You're listening to the Computer America Show on the Blog Talk Radio Network, the Boost Radio Network, the IRN Radio Network. Uh, David Perry is our guest for uh, the rest of the show. We'll be right back with him after this. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. Their mission is to protect and enhance the lives of companion animals and the people who love them. Their no-kill rescue shelter is open year-round, making it easy for people to adopt their best new friend. This year, Brother Wolf will find homes for over 2,400 orphan dogs, puppies, cats, and kittens. All have ended up as an orphan through no fault of their own. Brother Wolf has created a safe, nurturing environment where these special animals can heal emotionally and physically until they find a lifelong home. Their life-saving transport program brings dogs and puppies from overcrowded shelters in the south to rescues in the north where homes are easier to find. Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is a 501c3 organization. To learn more about their life-saving work and to make a donation, visit their website at www.bwar.org. That's www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy? Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-866-663-MYTV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-866-663-MYTV right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HD TV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Disable the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. yoo It's Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. This time, it's about the Werner Podium Ladder. Now, even with simple tech and workplace tasks like changing lights or running networking wires, we all sometimes end up with our feet way off the ground. And those top few steps on a ladder never seem safe or stable. So we asked Werner to send their new podium ladder a welcome solution to those frets about falling. The 44 and a half pound model that came in is officially an eight foot fiberglass and thereby non-conductive ladder with a 300 pound load rating, but with a different design that makes that top step feel stable even when we want to turn around to either side or backwards. There are a few reasons for that the least of which is an extra large platform at that top level. But unlike other ladders, this one doesn't stop at the top step. Above the top platform at about waist height is an extended guardrail with places to hold tools and materials, including an embedded magnet. Standing at the eight foot top platform level, 
means most people can reach up to 14 feet and still not feel precarious. They do make other heights in case your own workspace is either capped with too low a ceiling or to let the ladder fit uh, or, or, or you need an even higher destination for whatever you're climbing up to do. But the bottom line, the Werner Platform Ladder is the best gear for heights for people who haven't fully conquered their fear of heights. This is Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Uh, 33 minutes past the hour, that was Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review. Uh, not exactly the most highly technical product he's ever reviewed, but still... You know, uh, they, they do send these products, and he has reviewed them, and I think he does a great job of actually, you know, giving them a good shake. Although, you know, I've, I've worked with ladders, and, and, and I don't care if it's platform ladder or what have you, uh, get me more than three feet off the ground, and I, and, and, I'm, and I shut down. So, not looking forward to that. But, yeah, welcome back to the Computer America Show. Uh, we have David Perry here with us in this last half hour. And, uh, you know, we, we've talked all about F-Secure, we've talked all about their uh, great mobile solution, and uh, even have a product, uh, you know, uh, a product for mobile security, because mobile security really is overlooked. You know, we're using mobile phones more and more, and yet the security of it, highly lacking, and because there's a lack in there, that's where people see opportunity, and if there's opportunity, that's where you're vulnerable. So, ben, I, I want to make a distinction. This is actually more of what we would call a privacy product than a security. Privacy product. Okay. But and I mean, like, also, it... it oh, go ahead. Okay. Also, we also make a product that is a... that is like a Dropbox kind of a thing. It is a, it is a cloud storage product, but it is more secure than that is, and it is more fun than that is, and you can try it out for free with five megabytes, or sorry, five gigabytes of storage. It's called United, Y-O-U-N-I-T-E-D, and I, most recently, am using a brand new product, or a, or a, a brand new to me product from F-Secure called Keys, that is a, a uh, keychain manager and it is really useful because I don't know about you but I have being asked to have too many passwords to too many things are you having the same problem with things oh so oh so it's not just that, like like as soon as someone says key ring I think of Craig and his silly app that you know manages all, all of his uh, store you know membership what have you no you're talking about like you know keys essentially passwords to websites it's a password it's manager yeah. Pa okay. It's, okay. Um. Yeah. No. 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 I. I, I mean. You know. Uh. Good. Okay. Real quick. Good password security. Of course. Have a different password for every site. Keep it long. Keep it complicated. Keep it. You know. Ten. Ten. Eleven. Twelve characters. Well, once you get this signed up to manage all of the sites, you can make it roll the dice and issue long random passwords to everything. And all really? you have to remember is the master password to get into the this app. And well, I, and and you got to figure that's a lot more secure than than pretty much anything else. So, right. of course, if you get cut off from the internet, you're not going to get into any of them. But you're not going to get into any of them anyway if you're cut off. Yeah, from the yeah, and uh, but I mean that's and and that's always worth going over again on the show here, where people kind of get hacked and think, oh no, how how do we get hacked? You know, and and this happened with all the the celebrities who were hacked and you know and all the nude photos got. Uh, distribute out to There's everyone. There's something I want to say about that story. I actually did some news about that and did some research. Oh. What you have to know about that is that that was actually going on. They were getting capturing those things for a decade. Okay, those were ten years of captured nude photographs, and they were taken all different kinds of ways by all different kinds of people. They were just released all at once. They were just known about all at the same time. Really covered on a certain day, but the but the actual hacking went on over the course of a decade. Yeah, and I mean uh, the 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 way that the story I think a lot of people remember, or at least the way I remember it, was that you know Apple iCloud was kind of quote unquote hacked, which I think you know people's accounts were just compromised, and they went on and downloaded the photos. I mean. I get that you said you know the photos are taken many many different ways. Are you talking like you know people hacked into webcams and they took photos that way and you know all some of them different were ways. Some things came off of iCloud. Some things came off of the individual machines. Some things came off of Gmail. Something it was all different ways. Okay, and 
and then the hackers, or you know, and then the hackers so sold them. This was a this was a chain of people who traded nude photos of celebrities as a hobby, and they had been trading them around back and forth for years and years before they ever get caught on. Okay. So it, you see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The story gets changed when it goes to the media because people want to understand things as being all one thing, all one bucket of ideas yeah. that everything fits into. And things are not often all one bucket of ideas. So yeah, no, it, I'm drinking yeah. coffee. Oh, no, please, enjoy your espresso. No, but yeah, it's, uh, and of course, you know, to kind of tie back into what we were talking about a little bit earlier, if you have a VPN, I mean, that could probably save you a lot of... Uh, that would save you a lot of grief, but if you had secure storage and weren't using them in a storage space that could be hacked into, that would be good as well. So now, our stuff is secure, it's backed up many times, it is very, very encrypted, and it doesn't use any common carriers, it doesn't use any, it gets... It uses all kinds of things to keep anybody else from getting to it. Take a look at it. Take a look at it. It's called United, and it does other things that are cool. Like you can invite all of your friends to a party and invite them to the party on United, and then when they arrive, they all take pictures, and if you all belong to United, United will collate all of your photos of the same experience into one folder so that you can all see. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you... Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of flipped through it, and there was definitely a secure Dropbox with a social media splash to it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And I think they did a wonderful job on it. I use it myself. In fact, I have to go and buy some more storage on it right away. <laughs> what a, I'll just beg for it. You know, I'll, hey, this wow. is David in California. I need more storage. Help! Okay, then I'll give you Pretty much. Time. What kind of groups do you think, or you know, would you see as a perfect use case for something like this? Well, uh, photographers have been known to use this, and I've also known people who were teachers to use it, because you're sitting at the desk at work, you can just throw some some papers, and I throw research papers, I was at Virus Bulletin, I was grabbing research papers there that I was borrowing from people who were presenting, and putting them on my storage drive, and then I don't have to worry about carrying them home, because they're already on my phone, they're on my pad, they're on my computer, they're on my other computer, and my other other computer, and my other 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 computer, and that other 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 computer. <laughs> uh, Craig, you are just like me in this regard. You have six or seven computers in your house, don't you? Uh, let me see. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five computers right now. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Uh, we have more. When, when Ben comes to visit, he brings his computer. When Aaron comes to visit, he brings his computer. So, uh, yeah, so the, the, the computer numbers. And then instead of lighting a fire, we turn them all on, put them in the middle of the room, and just hold our hands up. It's <laughs> convenient. In my, I have, I'm about to get rid of Big Blue here. I have an HP workstation that just chunks out a lot of heat. It raises the temperature of the room that I'm in about five degrees. Well, that helps on the heating costs, doesn't it? I mean, you know. Just... Yeah, but I, it hurts on the air conditioning cost, which is a bigger yeah. deal here in California because today it was 70 here, and in February it'll be 70 here, and in March it'll be 70 here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You haven't you lived in California before, Craig? No, you lived in Vegas, didn't you? And, and California, both uh, Santa Monica, California, and I was in, I was in the uh, uh, Westwood, and then Santa Monica. Uh, what years did you live in Santa Monica, if you don't mind my asking? Seventy-three, seventy-four, seventy-five, around there. Oh, the Craig, wow, the things, things have Craig changed. Have I, I graduated from high school in nineteen seventy-three. I when I went back, because we all went back, uh, my whole family went. Ben with and Aaron and, and his mom and my, and my wife, and we all went back. It's so I, different. I didn't recognize it at all. I, I, you know, my memory of Westwood. I mean, uh, there used to be a, a Winchell's Donuts, which I loved. Couldn't find. It's gone. I mean, it's all built up, and it's just. Uh, Westwood's all shishi, but Santa Monica is really cool now. With the have, and everything. They still have Winchell's Donuts out there because I couldn't find one. There's lots of Winchell's donuts out here, but I don't eat donuts anymore, Craig. I had a gastric bypass uh, operation. I know, but I'm just mentioning, okay. Uh, oh, you're so mean to me. You're talking about the Winchell's <laughs> donuts again. Uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, I'm, just, I'm just pulling your leg. I don't mind. I thought I felt the tug somewhere. Actually, I live, in, I live in Huntington Beach, California, which I'm sure you've been to at least once. 
I've been up. We've, I mean, you, we've been up the Pacific Coast Highway, the US one. That well, that, I'm down the Pacific Coast Highway by Laguna Beach and Newport Beach. Yeah, that's a drive, though. We went on. That's a scary drive. Whoo, boy! I mean, that thing sometimes narrows into one lane. You're on the other. Not other anymore, Craig. Yeah, we were just there, and, it, and there was some construction, so there was like one lane. We had to wait for the light to change because it sensed cars. Oh yeah. And then they would go green, and then you got you got the one lane. Heaven help you if you meet a car in the middle of that, because one of you is going to have to go backwards on that. Well, road. I keep hearing from people who go, "Oh, they're not doing any. What are this this improve America? The shovel ready jobs? They never happened. They happened here. Yeah. In fact, I think they mostly happened in California on the freeways, and that's mostly what they're doing because they close, close down a different freeway every night. They spin a big wheel, and then they close down. <laughs> It's always the freeway that I am on. That's the one that gets closed down. And then the place that we wanted to go visit, which is called uh, uh, um, uh, not don't even ask me. Shell Beach. No, not Shell Beach. That was from the movie. Uh, but Seal it was Beach, Sunset Beach. It, it, anyway, we got there after traveling three thousand miles, and the place was closed. But they're uh -huh. <laughs> the Yeah, was it was like a small bed and breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it was close. But we found another one down the down. Do the not way. come out here again without letting me know. I will be your tour guide. I'll drag you, you know. all over the place. I let you know what? last time, but you weren't available. You 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 know. You, I was off working someplace. We're off working someplace. Right. You're a busy man. I, okay. I, I said we knew when we walked. Actually, the, we went to the Magic Castle. We said we knew you. And they went, David who? <laughs> no, I bet people knew who I was. <laughs> Real quick, um, you know, Wait, and, look at this T-shirt that I'm wearing. Wait, I'll stand up. Look at yeah. this. Look at this T-shirt that I'm wearing. Yeah. See, it says Frightmare, the Magic Castle. Yes, that's, that's right. Last year's Halloween, I'm on what they call the Boo Crew. If, this year, it was called Horror Vision. You know, if I were living out there, I would be like you. I'd go to the Magic Castle almost every night. I would be in heaven. I, 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 I love that place. And I, and I used to, when I was yeah. out there, I would go there all the time. I would go into the close-up room, and I would do close-up uh, uh, magic. I mean, you know, I was developing my the, you know, the, the mentalism thing at the time. But, uh, but that's, that's what I would do. I mean, that would oh, be... well, Craig, it's stuck. You're mental. <laughs> uh, we had a mentalism workshop with Joe Motti a couple of weeks ago, and I brought a mentalism trick that I'm working on, and I blew it. Oh, but that's, but what, that's that's what sessions are for. That's what you bring. You bring something into a session, Ben, is when it's all magicians there, and you bring in the stuff you're working on, and people give you pointers about how to do it. Yeah. Well, mine is a refinement of so many years, and I have it down I, to science. And once in a while, I'll forget something, and then I'll go in my mind later on and say, "Ah, oh, I can't believe I forgot to mention that." You know. Well, I'm I've got. Got... Go ahead. I'm assuming you went in there, and at the end of uh, of your whole act, you went and is this your card? And you pulled out like a folded up napkin. <laughs> ah, darn it! Well, uh, I'm not doing mentalism with cards. I'm doing what's called billet work, yeah. which you would call it billet work. Billet. That's 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 a little slip of paper. Little no no. It's a little slip of paper where you write it, have a prediction written on it. Billet. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. well, it's it's really a French word, so it's pronounced billet, but nobody <laughs> knows that. So you can say billet. I don't care. Billet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I put billets in my gun before I shoot them. But uh, yes, exactly. In your gin. You put billets in your gin before you shoot it at your minky. You're shooting the billets at the minky. Uh, exactly. So uh, you're right. So uh, I don't, I'm out of clever things to say. You, I'm on this show two hours. You completely drain my brain. I'm ready to like go lie out in the oh, road. Um, oh, I, I had an offbeat story that kind of reminded me of, of of your computer that I think you call Big Blue, and you know it said that it raised the, the the temperature in your room by like five degrees. And this story actually, you know, I came I came across this today, and it was so offbeat. I thought, you know, why not mention it on the show because it was funny. Was a German cloud company. Is offering free heat if you have room for some of its servers. <laughs> that's so, really that's a brilliant thing, you know. That's yeah. a, that's a, that's a that's a clever clever thing. Yeah, it's a uh, their their name is Cloud and Heat, and pretty much what they'll do is they'll they'll if you live in a house, they'll come out install a server rack. You know, it's a big cabinet, and you know there's a fan that blows out the back. It's it. And you know, they'll servers, pay for electricity. Yeah, it, they'll help pay for electricity, and they'll even run uh, internet to your house. You know, just you know, because you have to have some sort of business connection. No way you're getting, you know, Comcast at 12, 12 megabits up and down. Um, but yeah, no. 
a seven-year-old i7, and it's it's running flat out. It's pretty fast. It's got a lot of RAM. It's got 16 gigs of RAM or 16 megs of RAM in it, and it's got two terabytes, three terabytes of drive in it. So it's a big old computer. But wait a minute. Are you are you saying, uh, Ben, that that you, if you they let you put that in your home, that you get free heat? Is that what you're saying? You get the heat that's generated by the device. Yeah. Yeah, you get the heat generated by, by the servers because um, anyone who's ever you know been near servers or even been inside a server farm, it's very cold because servers tend to run very hot, especially when they're being used. So, especially for the winter months coming up, they're offering to you know help with the heating cost by installing a server. Wow, that's actually a novel idea. Yeah, that's what I thought. Is it working? I mean, people are going for it. Um, I think they're just they're just kicking off again. It's German, so obviously, uh, it's probably going to be offered in Germany. But uh, well, it gets cold. Yeah. It gets really cold in Germany, so it makes well, sense. you know, I'm I'm going to make another point, and that is, if you're trying to get privacy on your computer, do not go turn to an ad supported an ad supported product for to get privacy on your computer because ad supported products. Are breaking your privacy by definition. That's what you're calling back into a live show. We are reconnecting you now. Sorry about that. We got a break, but we're back. Go well, ahead. Well, you thought we had net neutrality until I said that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you cannot get privacy from an ad-supported product because the ad-supported products are breaking your privacy as a condition of their existence. That's what they do. Now, when you say that, I personally. I'm all for privacy, but how much privacy are you really giving away? And we're going to use the big, big one here: Google, Gmail, what have you. You know, Google and Gmail, Gmail specifically, because they'll scan your emails, looking and, and hunting for keywords. You know, like if, if I have one about students, then all of a sudden I'm going to get you know student loans, student computer, student this, student that. You know, they scan your email and your inbox for keywords and things like that, but. How, I mean, there's no one going through my emails and saying, okay, it looks like he's a student, so we need to start pushing, you know, ramen towards him. It, so if I, am, if I am not using the actual content, but I'm using a vector analysis of the content, are you familiar with the term case-based reasoning, Ben? Sure. Okay. Case-based reasoning is where I count all of the words in all of your emails and make a statistical count of all of them, and then I assign a statistical analysis to you that contains all of those counts so that I know – I'm checking to see what time it is – Okay, so that I know what all of the word counts are in all of the searches and all of the things that you do with your computer. So what I get out of that is – Metadata. That's what metadata is. It's an analysis of the data that can be collected on you, and we look at the analysis. So, how much does that break into your into your privacy? More than the data would itself hmm. is the answer to that. Because if I do a metadata analysis on you, I could show you a quote from the head of the of the NSA saying, "We kill people with drones based on metadata." Really? Really? Yeah. And a metadata will say, you know, if I make a statistical analysis of all the people using computers in the world and measure you against them, I know down to like five nines who you are, what kind of, you know, I know what kind of pajamas you wear, I know, you know, what kind of coffee you drink, I know where you go to shop, I know how old you are, I know your name and address and your phone number, and I know everything about you. And this is what's driving. Go on eBay and look at some products that are the same. Look at four or five products that are, that are the same, and then log on to Facebook, and you will notice that you are suddenly getting ads for the products that you looked at on eBay. My wife experienced that not too long ago. She was looking for curtains or something, and uh, yeah, and uh, then she went on to... Uh, this is no coincidence. Yeah, this and is metadata. Metadata with ads for curtains. She says, "What is this? You know, how do they know?" That's, that's metadata. That's metadata in action. And, and I'm going to tell you this. I know Groucho Marx said it. I never metadata. I didn't like. <laughs> oh my gosh! Man. <laughs> you should. Oh, we're running out of time. I should have said that, right? You could have said that, right? Exactly. Uh, it's time. It's time. The rim shot was late, but uh, <laughs> okay. All right, so um, I never met a four I didn't like. A couple of threes, some twos. Um, Actually, yeah. there is a there is a entry on my blog called "I Never Met a Data I Didn't Like." Mm -hmm. My blog is, of course, can I say what my, where my blog is to be found? Of course, absolutely. Yeah, why not? 
It's www.davidperryvirus.com. That's www.davidperryvirus.com. And mm -hmm. uh, all the information about F-Secure may be found at www.f-secure.com. And if you're driving or whatever, and you don't get... Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, if you're driving, tune in right now to F-Secure. Yeah, no, no. And you Write listen that down. Pull, no, don't pull over. It's too, you're, you're, you're busy. You're going places. Just pull out your phone. Just you go. Know. Just Drive with your knee and and punch it in. Just got a computer. Say that somebody's going to go die because he said that, and then you're going to feel <laughs> bad for a long time, Ben. Just got a computeramerica.com. Click on our show notes button, and you'll see the hot link to F Secure. It's right there. Can you put the link to the blog in there as well? I could. Yeah. Now what? Uh, David I, Perry I, virus. Yes, I will put that in there too. David Perry virus. Right. I will. I will. I will. I will add it to you it. You have the technology. Yeah. Right, and please, everyone, follow my virus. I need the numbers. My blog. Follow my blog. I need the numbers. <laughs> I'm begging. I'm begging here, folks. Follow is my it, blog. I need is the it, numbers. Is it David dot Perry dot virus? David Perry virus. All one word. David Perry virus dot com. Okay. Okay. I got it. But right. also, if you want to find out information about me, you should you should Google for David Perry virus as three words, and you will find out my Wikipedia page, which really needs updating, and a bunch of other things about me. You know, you're not allowed to write your own Wikipedia page. Very true. Why? Craig, you that? have a Wikipedia page. Yes, I do, but I didn't write it. No, you can't write your own Wikipedia page. And if you write to them and say, hey, you know, this information's not good, they say, go away. You're not allowed to write on your own Wikipedia page. <laughs> yep. And you can go look. What's funny is you can look at the arguments that the people who run Wikipedia have about your Wikipedia page. And that's fascinating. You can look at the hey, arguments the way, they have about any Wikipedia page. If you go to the show notes page right now, you, it's davidperryvirus.com is up there. So all right on. Secure is there. David Perry, that virus com is up there. Neil, De Neil oh. deGrasse Tyson. Yes. Sure. He, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is the 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 astrophysicist. You know, they see him, you see him everywhere. He he does uh, the Hayden Blatt. I believe he works at the Hayden Planetarium. Uh, he does like a lot of stuff, and uh, he apparently is seen by a uh, by the community as a huge atheist, which he's not. He he's not an atheist at all. He's a uh, uh, agnostic or, or what have you, and yet his yeah. Wikipedia, in which it, his Wikipedia page kept saying, you know, he is an atheist, and he kept trying to go in there, changing it and changing it, and they called him and they wouldn't let him change it. The only way he could do it was to go in anonymously and change it to support or uh, reported as an atheist. <laughs> so, like, like even if there's information you really object to on there, you can't change it yourself. Yeah. What do you call an atheist with children? I don't know. What? A Unitarian. That's the joke. <laughs> Unitarians will get it. Okay. <laughs> what do you call What do you call an atheist with no moral conviction? What? An agnostic. <laughs> All yeah. these side jokes, exactly. I know. I'm really getting you in trouble here, aren't I? These are. This is like you can't talk about religion. This yeah, is, we could take some hate mail. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. We can take. We can take some hate mail. Okay. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's what you think. You, I've, you ever had hate mail? Go work in tech support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what surprised me, that you actually invited people to come down and look at the place. That that seems like the last thing you want to do. A guy actually showed up with a gun one time, but we're not going to talk about that. That was really entertaining. That was in Santa Monica. That was, The guy showed up with a gun. To all my fans out there, uh, I'm in uh, Cal I'm going to be... Uh, here in Southern California for the rest of the month, and then you'll be seeing me. I think in December we can come in on and do a Christmas shopping show. Do you want to do that, Craig? Absolutely. By the way, you know that Easy Pass. You know, uh, I just got a piece of spam that's saying that I didn't pay my Easy Pass. I don't even use Easy Pass, uh, and they want. Did you used to use one when you were in Florida? Nope, never used it. Uh, I use. We one have Sun Pass. Sun yeah, we have Fast Pass, and I use one. I use one now in Los Angeles. And it's spam. People click on it and pay, throw their money at it. You know, just be careful. Anyway, listen, David. Uh, we'll definitely do a holiday special, and we'll I'll have you on there too. And of course, I'll wear Santa costume for that. You could be a Santa. Yeah, I could see. Can I be Santa on the show? Yeah, you could be Santa. You could be. Could we have a night where we give away a bunch of stuff from a yeah. bunch of years? We That'd could. be cool. That'd be cool. Let's have an all gift show in December. You could be the Computer America Santa. Exactly. That'd be great. I have the beard for. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> we didn't get you anything, little Ben, because you were bad. <laughs> He's always. Yeah. Uh, no, you're a good kid. You're a kid. You're gonna get something. Let me tell you. 
We we we're we're pretty much out of time again. Uh, you, uh, check out Frank, the, for your socks, eight pairs. Right. Stay with, with the gold toes. The gold toes would be good. Uh, David, you have to stay with us at the end because we have our after right. show uh, video that we'll do. But uh, again, right thanks so much for being with here with us again, and uh, and um, uh, we will catch you in December. And of course, we'll see you out at the uh, Showstoppers event at, at uh, CES you bet. Vegas. All right. All right. Uh, coming up on tomorrow night's show, what do we got coming? Ninety up? seconds. We've got um, Ralph Bond. It's time for Bond. Ralph Bond. Uh, our our uh, uh, he used to be with Intel. He's now with Autodesk. He's with us for both hours, and he has all kinds of really uh, fun stuff that he finds on the internet that shares with us, including not a 3D but a 4D printing process that we're going to be a 4D printing. What could that possibly be? And also, he's going to talk about 3D printing's revolution impact, impact on healthcare. He's got a uh, 60 second exoskeleton glove that lets you feel virtual objects. These are some of the stories that we're going to be talking with him uh, on tomorrow night's show. Uh, he does not it, have a dead frog. No, he does not have a dead frog. He's not, definitely not. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much to all of you for uh, being with us here tonight, and uh, and hopefully. You'll be with us here tomorrow night with uh, Ralph Bond, uh, again, with Autodesk.com. He's a, he's a fun guy. He hasn't been with us here quite as long as, uh, as uh, David Perry, but almost. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow night. So until tomorrow night, this is Craig Crossman hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. We'll see you tomorrow night. <gasps> Good night, everyone. Oh, that lady. She cuts me off every time. Ha, <laughs>